Any standard data lifecycle has four major steps. That is to ingest the data, store the data, process and analyze, and eventually explore and visualize the data. So in this video, we will understand how we can create this end-to-end -end data lifecycle using Google Cloud Platform products for every step. And also, we will answer one important question, which is where to store data in GCP based on the format, whether it is if it is structured, semi-structured or unstructured data. So by the end of this video, we will understand some popular GCP products for this whole data lifecycle where every product fits in and then a decision matrix to decide uh, based on the type of your data where to store it on GCP. Hello friends, welcome to ITK Fund Day, your own channel where we make IT interesting for everyone. And in this video, we will understand how a data lifecycle runs on GCP. So without further ado, let's get started. So friends, these are some popular products which forms the part of the GCP data lifecycle. But by no means, this is an exhaustive list. There are multiple products which uh, continuously uh, comes on Google Cloud Platform. Also, there are some products which I have uh, intentionally skipped because I only wanted to focus on products which I know personally and which are very popular. Uh, so yeah, let's start with uh, a brief overview of all these products. So at the ingest ingestion layer, we have Google App Engine. Again, it is a platform as a service offering from GCP. The second is Compute Engine, which is again very famous for providing infrastructure as a service. If you want to deploy your VMs and everything, you use uh, Compute Engine. This is also can be used for ingestion mechanism, ingesting the data into a data lifecycle. Kubernetes Engine, uh, again, uh, providing all the services through Kubernetes clusters. Cloud functions are serverless, event-driven functions, uh, which we can use to run some very, very uh, small or specific uh, data loads. Uh, so that's what uh, cloud function is used for. Cloud Run again is a serverless offering for uh, managing and running our containerized application. So using Cloud Run, you can directly deploy a container and uh, run it on GCP. This is also used for ingesting uh, the data into the data lifecycle. PubSub is the streaming service which provides uh, an offering wherein you can ingest streaming data, uh, for example, IoT data uh, using Cloud PubSub. So these are some products. Again, there could be some other products as well, but uh, in this particular video, I'm only covering these because I'm well aware of these products. So moving on to the next uh, stage, which is storage. Uh, cloud storage is our multi-class, multi-region object storage offering. Uh, you can store any kind of data into cloud storage and that's why primarily your data lake solutions are based on cloud storage. You, you can store files, you can store CSVs, you can even host static websites on cloud storage. Cloud SQL is a relational database offering and this is uh, for deploying your SQL Server instances or your Cloud SQL uh, instances on GCP. So this is to manage your relational database. Firestore is our NoSQL document database. So suppose if you want to store NoSQL data, then you should use Firestore service. Bigtable is again a NoSQL wide column database. So if you have time series data, and if you have very wide spread data, uh, then this is something which you should go for. It is extremely fast, especially when it comes to uh, uh, running any time series or event data. BigQuery is very famous for analytical workloads and it is uh, primarily used for storing the data. Uh, it is very fast, very efficient. So BigQuery is your go-to option for analytic workloads and you can store your data in BigQuery. Cloud Spanner uh, is again an offering wherein if you want to massively horizontally scale your relational database, then instead of using Cloud SQL, which is very limited, you should go for Cloud Spanner because it is a serverless offering uh, from GCP uh, for managing your relational uh, database. So this is our storage layer. Now moving on to process and analyze. So Cloud Data Flow is the service for streaming and the batch data processing on GCP. And this is very, very famous, uh, used very widely. It, you can consider it as a programmatic ETL tool. Dataproc is used to run your managed Spark and Hadoop clusters. So if you have anything on-prem, you can migrate it and use it under Dataproc. This is also used to process and analyze the data. Data Fusion is a very new offering which gives us a GUI 
a user interface to run or design our ETL workloads. Because the problem or the challenge you can say with data flow is that it is very friendly for programmers, uh, Java or Python programmers to design data pipelines. But people who come from a product background, who are used to create ETL pipelines uh, on Informatica or on data stage, those uh, developers, ETL developers find data fusion more intuitive because it is uh, GUI based. Data prep is again an offering for, uh, you know, doing all sort of data wrangling operations on the data which you already have in store. BigQuery can be considered for processing and analyzing the data as well. So it has come in here also. So some of the products might float into different categories. Uh, so yeah, please keep that in mind. So moving on to our last stage, which is explore and visualize. The first product is Data Lab. Data Lab is a web-based uh, tool which helps us visualize and analyze the data. And it is built on Jupyter Notebook. Looker provides us a visualization product. It was a separate company, but now it has been merged with uh, Google Cloud. Uh, so yes, it is something similar to Tableau or other visualization products. Uh, Looker falls in that category. So for all sort of visualizations, you can use Looker. Data Studio, again, a Google Cloud offering to create visualizations, dashboards on GCP based on different sources. Google Sheets, a very, very different uh, option, but yet, yes, you can use uh, data from BigQuery and other sources to directly come into Google Sheet and you can play around with that data into uh, some sort of an Excel interface. And finally, data catalog. Data catalog is more about metadata management. So under data catalog, we manage the data definitions and we manage the overall data quality. So yes, uh, so these are some products. Again, uh, I have intentionally skipped some products uh, which might find in one of these categories, especially in artificial intelligence. But uh, yes, maybe in some other video, we can cover those part of the products uh, separately. But in totality, these products are used uh, majorly when we talk about a data lifecycle. So now let's quickly understand how we can store our structured, semi-structured and unstructured data in various different uh, storage products on GCP. So friends, now let's quickly understand how to store and where to store your structured, semi-structured and unstructured data. Uh, so starting from structured data, if it is transactional, you have two options, Cloud SQL and Cloud Spanner. Based on your scalability needs, you will decide which one is apt for you. If it is analytical data, then obviously the go-to choice is BigQuery because this is where you store your all the data uh, analytical workloads. Now coming to semi-structured data, in your semi-structured data, you have to see whether your data is fully indexed or if it has a single row key indexed data. If it is a single row key indexed data and it is a wide table, then Cloud Big Table is the choice for you. Uh, wherein if it is fully indexed, then Cloud Data Store or what we call today as Cloud Firestore uh, would be your option because now Data Store has been merged into Firestore. If it is unstructured data, uh, no question asked, it is straight away cloud storage. Cloud storage is our object storage for storing all kinds of data. So based on this, you can decide which is the perfect product for you to store your data. So I hope this decision matrix will help you. So friends, this brings us to the end of this video. So to quickly recap, we understood the four different stages which forms the standard data lifecycle. Then we went about understanding famous product offerings which GCP gives us to create this data lifecycle on GCP. We started with products in ingest, moving on to storage, then processes and analyze, and then explore and visualize. After that, we went about understanding how to make a decision where to store your data based on your data type. If it is structured, if it is semi-structured or if it is unstructured data. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If it is, then please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you exactly know when I upload my next video. Please let me know in the comment section below what next you would want to learn in the field of IT. As we have always said, we make IT interesting for everyone, be it IT or non-IT. So please keep supporting this initiative, guys. 
a lot of respect lot of love to all of you and until next time please keep learning keep sharing all the knowledge and yes keep hustling bye for now